We pray that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, so we can have eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, I pray that you would give me utterance in your Holy Spirit and boldness to speak as I ought to speak. As I open my mouth, I would speak the oracles of God. Use me as your instrument today. Lord, we depend on your Holy Spirit. Father, in our midst, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and amen. So I want you to taste and see today. A lot of times in the church, uh, that's what we need to do. We need to let people to taste and see. So praise God, our guests. I hope it tastes good today. I hope you see that it's good. Praise God that you have fun today here in church and each and every one of us. Uh, uh, praise God. And, and so I'll start off talking about Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So we taste and see in Jesus. Aren't you glad that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior? Amen. So we can taste and see that he is he's a good God. He's got good things for you. He's got blessings for you today. First John chapter 4 verse 4 says, You dear children are from God and overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So who's that he that's in you? That's greater than he that is in the world. And let's talk about the Holy Spirit inside of us. We've got the greater one living inside of us if Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And he's greater than he who is in the world. Who is he that is in the world? The devil. Right. And, and demonic spirits. We've got the greater one living inside of us. Because when we prayed and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we invited him to come into our life. Praise God. And, uh, um, and he will come in. So uh, um, in Luke 6 verse 19, the Bible says, And all the people tried to touch him. If Jesus was here this morning, and Jesus is, is here this morning, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So Jesus is here in our midst. And you say, how is he here? He's here by the presence of his Holy Spirit. But if Jesus was here, you know what? Everybody would be pushing in and trying to touch him. They'd be like, hey, I got to touch Jesus, man. I got to touch him. You know, and uh, have you ever met anybody famous or been around some people where they're famous and everything like that? And, and they instantly, that's instantly what people do. They, they kind of push in and, 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 and try to touch them. I was really impressed. I got to go to Nigeria and I got to see uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua, my, uh, God, he, uh, God, uh, man who God was mightily using at the time just tremendously. And, and uh, people would press in. Just mobs, and I, and I saw them around children, and the children would just come and run into them. They would come run into them, and, and uh, it was just a wonderful thing. And that's what, uh, that's what you, you know, you can touch Jesus, and God wants you to touch him, and, and he also wants to touch you, uh, okay? And uh, uh, they tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. So what, what is a touch? I'm going to talk about a touch. A touch is something that is tangible. You know, um, you know, we, some of us in here, we have different love languages. You know, they, uh, the man came out with the book, and he talked about different love languages. And some of them are what? Words of affirmation. People like it when you have words of affirmation. And then you just talk and have a good time together. That, is that, that's, what, that's what yours is, right, Faith? Yours, uh, so Faith's love language is, is, is words. Some of them are serving. They just love it when you serve. Sister Belinda loves it when people serve her. And so, so, you know, when I cleaned the dish, I cleaned the dishes the other day. And she's like, oh, Chris, you're just the most wonderful husband in the world. Because I washed the dishes. Uh, I was like, praise the Lord. That was easy. <laughs> you, you know? And, and what, 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 what's your... What's your, your Time. Time is another one. People like it when they just spend time. And so Joyce's love language is time. Uh, you, you know, and my love language is touch, touch, you know, when I was a little boy and everything, you know, and I wrestled around with my brothers and they got me in a headlock and go like, ah, that means they loved me. Ah! And, and I would get them in a headlock and that meant I loved them. And then my mom would give me a nice hug. She said, come here, Chrissy, honey, I want to give you a hug. And I was like, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> you know, my aunts would come and squeeze my cheek and go like this. Oh, Chrissy, honey, oh. I'd be like, oh, they're going to squeeze my cheek. And my dad would give me a knuckle sandwich on my head and this, that, and the other thing. You know? Uh, so, it's, uh, listen, touching is very, very important. It's very important. 
I don't get excited when Belinda does the dishes for me. I, I, I get excited when she comes over and gives me a big kiss. I'm like, oh, yes, I'm like in heaven. Yeah, right? Yeah, no, a touch is something tangible. God wants to touch you today. He wants to touch you. Amen? And people need that tangible touch of God. Our congregations need that tangible touch of God. And, and, and prophecy encourages you to do what God has already told you to do. So if somebody gives you a prophecy, that is not for to t- try to tell you something different. New Testament prophecy is to already encourage what is in your heart. What is in your heart. It's, it's for edification, exhortation, and for comfort. It's not to tell you to, to do something. Okay? Uh, you, you know, per se. Like in the Old Testament, but New Testament prophecy encourages you to do what, what God has already told you to do. So if I end up giving you a prophecy, which I mean, that could even happen today, when in the movie the Holy Spirit, I give you a prophecy, a word from the Lord, it, it, you, it needs to be in your heart. And if it's not in your heart, you just need to forget about it. Just forget about it. Okay? Can I miss it? I'm a man. I, I can possibly miss it too. Uh, uh, but, but we want to stay with the things of God. And just grab onto God, whatever God is speaking to you. And the Bible is God speaking to you. The word must become a word, the rhema, spoken word of God. Now, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that over, has overcome the world, even our faith. Say, my faith will overcome the, the world. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. See, Satan is the God of this world. And church, just keep on praying and praying and praying. You heard about all these shootings, right? And people say, well, why is that shoot happening? It's the devil. I mean, a little one-year-old can come up with the answer. That's the devil. I haven't heard anybody say that on TV. <laughs> yeah, oh, may, maybe they have been right. Uh, her brother said, me. I guess they cut it out, uh, right? But who, who's the answer? Jesus. Jesus is the answer. A- amen. Praise God. Now, we're in Christ now. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I mean, there's no condemnation if you're in Christ. See, the devil would try to make you feel bad. I don't want the devil making anybody feel bad here this morning. Amen? Yeah, with condemnation, he tries to say, well, you're going to hell. That's what condemnation is. You're going to hell. No, Jesus is the answer. Amen? He, he's the answer. We don't, want, we, we don't want to ever want to tell anybody, go to hell. No, we want to say, go to heaven. If they tick you off, say, you know something? You need to go to heaven. <laughs> You just need to go to heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not early either. Praise God. Get right with God. And so faith is a response and relationship between us and God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have approaching him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now the key there is what? We have to ask according to his will. I remember before I was saved, I used to ask God for a lot of things. Hello? And a lot of those things were not good. So I am so glad he did not answer my prayer. Amen. How about you? (laughs) Amen. Praise God. But if we ask according to his will, he will hear us. And that's what we want to do. God doesn't want us to live defeated lives. Amen. The, the, The law was to show us that we needed to surrender. Amen. And can you say that today, I surrender? Amen. I surrender. And you need to wave the white flag. Let's go ahead and put that up there. See the flag there? Oh, it's already up there. So, so that's where we, we got to come to a point in our life like, I surrender, Lord. I surrender. Wave the white flag. And I surrender what? All. <clears throat> Not just 50%. We need to surrender all. I surrender all to you, Lord. Praise God. And that, that's what Richard's going to be doing later on when he gets water baptized. He's like, I surrender. Ha! I surrender all. 
Uh, my old man goes down, and I'm coming up a new man living for Jesus. A- amen. How are we living for Jesus this morning? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to be living for Jesus. And, and just go ahead and wave that white flag. A lot of times I had to wave that white flag. I surrender, Lord. A- amen. I surrender. Because he'll leave you, if you're going to be stubborn, he'll leave you doing your stubbornness. And then when you're in your stubbornness, guess what? A lot of times there's pain in that stubbornness. Amen? But he just wants you to, to what? Say, I surrender. I, I surrender. I surrender all. I remember, like I said, I used to wrestle with my little brothers and stuff and get them in headlocks and, and everything like that. And I'd be like, surrender. You know, cry uncle. Cry uncle. And be like, no, I am not crying uncle. Ah! And I'd be like, come on. Ah! I'd be like, okay, uncle. I surrender. And we need to surrender all to Jesus. Amen? We need to surrender to him. In John chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible says, and I'm just hopping around some different scriptures here that I felt led the Lord to share with you this morning. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. We cannot come to God through any other way. It's only through Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Okay, and the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. And the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. You're his sheep, and the sheep what? Listens to his voice. I'm glad you're listening to his voice here this morning. And he calls his own sheep by name. God knows your name. And he calls you by name. And he leads them out, and he has brought them out uh, all on his own, and he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. There's many voices out there, but it's important that we follow the voice of what? Of God. Amen? And the voice of the Holy Spirit. It says, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Amen? And sheep do that. Sheep will recognize uh, 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 the, the, the master's uh, voice. We need to recognize the master's voice. Now, Romans 1, verse 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of, re- of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. The just or the righteous live by faith. Galatians 3, verse 11, uh, these three faith scriptures, I really like them about living by faith. It says that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. So we're not justified by the law, by keeping the law. We're justified by faith. Because if we try to keep all the law, we only break one point of the law, then, then we, we, we broke it all. And the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. And all fall short the glory of God. So thank God we're, we, we don't go by the law. Because a lot of times we, th- we, we think well, if we do everything right, then God will give us what we want. If we do everything right, then God will give me my healing. It doesn't work that way. It works by faith. By faith. Amen? Now, we, do we want to live right? Of course we want to live right. But it happens by faith. Miracles happen by faith they don't happen by keeping the law amen and i've seen people get miracles and they get miracles many times through the relationship through christ where the word becomes a word okay and i've seen some people they just get healed by having a merry heart the bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine but a broken spirit drieth the bones and i've seen people rejoicing and just rejoicing in the Lord and praising him. Amen. Amen. Something bummed me out the other day a little bit. And then I was like, okay, what am I going to do? I, I just went in my office and I, I pulled out my guitar and I worshiped the Lord for a half an hour. Guess what? It was gone. It was gone. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Amen. You put on the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. And it's gone just like that. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. And see, it's through our relationship. The just shall live by faith. Amen? 
And then, so if we live by faith, we need to cut our brothers and sisters in Christ, cut them some slack. <laughs> cut them some slack. Amen. Sometimes we need to cut our children some slack. Amen. Praise God. Uh, uh, praise, uh, uh, because the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10, verse 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if, I, uh, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So the, the walk of faith is an abs. This is the absolute. The absolute is not the law. Are you with me here this morning? The absolute is not the law. The absolute, we're a, we're a word of faith church. That's what type of church we are. Okay, and the absolute is faith. If you're going to have anything, if you're going to have a marriage, you've got to do it by faith. Amen? We have a relationship with God. We've got to do it by faith. Our walk with Christ is by faith. We get our healing by faith. We get our miracles by faith. You get prosperity by faith. The faith is the absolute. And the faith is the absolute for a believer. A lot of people don't understand absolutes today. Because the world says what? That there is no absolutes. But I'm telling you, they're absolutely wrong. <laughs> they're absolutely wrong. Because there are absolutes. If you jump out of an airplane without a parachute, you're going to absolutely fall to the ground. <laughs> absolutely. Right, Brother Joe, he, he did a lot of parachuting. Praise God for Brother Joe serving in, the, in our country. Absolute is not qualified and diminished in any way. It's the total. The absolute is existing independently and not relation to other things. So we're an absolute walk of faith. Like God says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's an absolute. So God is going to give us this day our daily bread. That's an absolute. That's what the absolute. But the absolute is not the price of the loaf of bread. I went to shop and save this week. It blew my mind. It was $4 for a loaf of bread. Oh, I was getting a home pride loaf of bread. And I was like, $4. I was like, shanda da badandai. $4 for a loaf of bread. And then how many have gone to the gas station? Did you go to the gas station? I think I went yesterday. Uh, you, no, it was Friday. I was like, oh, I don't want to come back here too often. <laughs> hey, but, but listen, we have absolutes. The price is not the absolute. What, the price of the gas is not the absolute. The price of the loaves of bread is not the absolute. What is the absolute? Our faith in God. Are you with me this morning? A, 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 our, our, that is the absolute. And, and, and so it's not relative and it's not comparative. But it will work everywhere. The, an absolute is something that is fixed. The Lord is our helper. And I shall not want. Say that when we say the Lord is my helper. And I shall not want. Amen. That's the absolute. So God gives us freedom, the freedom and ability Remember last Sunday we had our, we had the last Sunday, if you weren't here, we had our David and Goliath set up here. It was so wonderful. Those kids had a wonderful time. And I loved it. They were loving me and I was loving them. They were running up, hugging me and everything. Oh, Pastor Grass. And little William was like, yay, why don't you grow like Goliath again? I was like, okay, rawr. Because I like, yay. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Yeah, praise God. But in the story with David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, verse 34, and Dave, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock, I went and struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. How many can remember some things, miracles that God did for you? Amen. God's done some miracles for you. When, when he's rescued you from, from the bear and from the lion. I remember some of my dog. I had my other dog. Was, was his champion was a hunting dog. He was a beagle, and he was out in the middle of the yard. These wild dogs came out of the neighborhood, out of the woods, because there was more woods back in that day and everything. I went running out of the house with just my shorts on, barefoot, nothing on top. I grabbed a broom, and I, and I, I, I chased off these wild dogs with a broom. 
And they actually bit him. They bit him, but he had that, I call it that beagle skin. He, they can go through briars and everything, and they weren't able to, to, to they sink his, their teeth into him. And I was like, and afterwards, I was like, did I just do what I, what I thought I did? I chased away a bunch of wild dogs from my dog without thinking. <laughs> In my bare feet, with my shorts, with no shirt. And Jim was, was like, can we go in the house? I was like, sure, come on in the house. <laughs> Amen. That, that God, I know God has done thing, those things for you too. He's done some wonderful things for you too. It says that when it turned and seized me, I seized it by its hair and struck it and killed it. And your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be one of them. Because he has defied the armies of the living God. Listen, church, we're the army of the living God. We are the army of the living God. And our God is a living God. And, and David testified that the Lord is with me. Say, the Lord is with me. Amen. Psalm 1910 says, more to be desired than, than gold, finer than the gold, sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. That's what you need. You don't need more gold per se. What you need is God. Some people are pursuing gold this morning. But thank God you're here in the house of God and you're pursuing God. Amen. You pursue God, he'll give you the gold. Amen. The rhema word, the spoken word of the Holy Spirit, the word of God. So the Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the rhema spoken word of God that gives us revelation is how faith comes. Now we have access to the throne of God. We have access to the throne of God by the blood of Jesus. We can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace to help in the time of need. He, Hebrews 4 verse 16 says, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You don't have to pray a certain prayer 50 times to come boldly before the throne of grace. You can come boldly before God. Now, the blood of Jesus Christ has made us worthy. Jesus' blood was God's blood. That's why he had to be born of a virgin, because the bloodline comes through the Father, and it came through the Father God and the Holy Spirit by a miracle and through the Virgin Mary, and Jesus was born of a virgin. And Jesus' blood was God's blood that was shed for us, not man's blood, God's blood. Amen. So his blood made us worthy. When he died on Calvary, and he shed his blood for us, and he, he, he died and was buried, and he rose again, defeating hell, death, and the devil. And his blood makes us worthy. Say, I'm worthy. I grew up in the church, and they used to say all the time, Lord, I'm not worthy, but only speak the word, and thy servant shall be healed. And we used to say that over and over and over again. Every Sunday morning, we used to say, Lord, I'm not worthy. But guess what? We are worthy. Because Jesus shed his blood for us. Okay, but at least the man was humble before God, and we need to be humble before God and ask for his help. And we ask for his help. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. We humble ourselves before him. And Psalm, uh, uh, Philippians 3, verse 10 says, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. Don't you want to know God more? How many want to know God more? How many want to know God's power more? And I believe his power is here this morning. For us to flow in his power more and more. Wednesday night service, you just felt the power of God. It just fell down on the whole congregation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I believe the power of God is here too. And I believe it's falling. Amen. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to one of his death. Psalm 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, he, he has removed our transgressions from us. So we don't want to have a sin consciousness, but we can have a righteousness consciousness that he's taken away our sins all the way as far as the east is from the west. If you head west this morning and you keep heading west and you keep heading west and keep heading west, what will happen? You'll just keep on going forever. You'll go around the whole globe and you'll just keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. That's our sins. Our sins are gone. And they keep on going. Praise God. So we got a brand new day in Christ and everything we have. 
So Jesus is the answer, and God is inexhaustible. God is unlimited. God is infinite. God is unfailing. And the refrigerator is before you. You say, what do you mean the refrigerator is before you? No, when I was growing up, maybe you didn't grow up this way, but my parents were a little bit strict when it came to the refrigerator. Obviously, because I was a boy who could eat. And I had three brothers who could eat, too. And my dad didn't like it when he went and bought a loaf of bread, and, he, and, and, then, and then he came home, and the whole loaf was gone. <laughs> so we kind of rationed the bread sometimes. And my mom, you know, said, no, Chrissy, you can only have two sandwiches. Or, or, or the milk, you know, you can only have one bowl of cereal. You cannot have ten bowls of cereal. You know, as I was a growing boy. You're all looking at me like, like, uh, like, like you never knew what it was like to be growing and everything like that. So we weren't allowed to go to the refrigerator and get stuff out of the refrigerator for obvious reasons. You know, I played football. My other brother played football. My other brother played football. My brother Mike, he was a trumpet player. Praise God, a little more academic and everything like that. But, I mean, we could eat the whole thing. So my dad would say, you cannot go to the refrigerator and you can't just take food out whenever you feel like it. But listen, we're now in the kingdom of God. We're in the kingdom of God. Listen, we have the promises of God right here in the Bible. You can go to the refrigerator and take anything out anytime you want. You can taste and see that the Lord. You can open up that refrigerator and, oh, here's some healing. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, you, you know, Jerry Lewis said the bit, bit best comedy act he ever had was when he opened the refrigerator at night and he started eating the food. You all look at me all religious, you know, like you've never done that before. Like, oh, here's some pudding. Mm, I'm going to eat some pudding. Oh, look at there, some cottage cheese. Mm, oh, there's some yogurt. Mm. You all pray for Sister Belinda now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But we got, get to go to the refrigerator and take whatever we want in Christ. Righteousness, holiness, whatever you need, strength, power. You're going to have to take some love right now. Wouldn't the world be a better place? I believe love is the answer. The people quit shooting at each other. Amen. I mean, if they get really torn, man, they can go to the store and buy some marshmallows and throw them at the other person. <laughs> uh, hello amen love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and self-control faith hope and love again love praise god that we're the church you know i've been praying for the church i've been praying for me i've been praying for the church a whole lot that we just love each other more than ever. More than ever. We love each other more than ever. Praise God. I just share from my heart. That's not in my notes. Praise, praise Lord. Isaiah 53, verse 1, it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It's revealed to us, but to those who use faith. Faith causes God's mighty arm to move. Faith. Amen. Those who believe. How many believers do we have here this morning? Praise God. Say, that's me. Hey, yeah, that's you. Praise God. See, the Holy Spirit, and as I'm wrapping it up here, the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. On Pentecost Sunday, and the Holy Spirit came. And the Holy Spirit's here right now. And I just want to read the account of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. In order for them to be all together in one place, they had to be walking together in love. Was Peter in the room? Was Peter in the room? Yeah, he was in the room. So guess what? People had to forgive Peter for denying Jesus three times. Now he you look, that's the one right there. They had to forgive Peter for trying to murder Malchus. He tried to murder Malchus. He just didn't try to cut off his ear. He swung for his head and got his ear. Couldn't even do that right. <laughs> okay. But praise God for the love of God. They had to forgive all each other. All the disciples for running away and not being at the cross. John had to forgive everybody. John was the only one st left standing. He had to forgive everybody. You bunch of 
cowards. But no, it's a brand new day. Amen? Here. And it was the 50th day after, after Passover, and Passover was when Jesus died on the cross. He was the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. And suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sinning. I was, I was uh, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, one night we designated that night, and I believe this is the time here in the morning, and I thought a tornado would come whipping in the room. And uh, it didn't, but the peace of God came in. And the Holy Spirit came in so strong. Praise God. And they saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire that separated, that came to rest on each of them. So the Holy Spirit sat on them. Amen. And when God sits on you, you, you're sat on. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enables us. After we give our hearts to Christ. And now that we're staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation on the heaven which heard this sound. And the crowd came together when bewilderment, be, bewilderment because each one heard them speak in their own language being spoken. And utterly amazed they asked, aren't these all speaking Galileans? How, then how is it that each of us hears our own native language? So, so then a little bit later, Peter addressed the crowd and Peter stood up with the 11 and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Uh, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain to you, uh, listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose for it's only nine in the morning. But what happened is they were praying all night long. And then what were they praying for? They were praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said earlier to his disciples in Luke 11, verse 9, he says, I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receives, and he that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh it, it shall be opened. If son shall ask bread of any of that is a father, will he give him a stone? If he ask for a fish, uh, will he for a fish give a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then be an evil... Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? See, we have to ask for the Holy Spirit. We have to ask for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, the Bible says, And what things whoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. You're like, Lord, I believe that I receive and then you shall have them. You have to believe that you receive before you have. Hello? Amen? You believe that you receive, and then you shall have. Okay? And Acts chapter 2, verse 16, it says, Now this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, Jews and Gentiles, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, men and women, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, the, the young and the old. And even upon my servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And I'll show you wonders in heaven above, and signs in earth beneath, blood and fire and billows of smoke. And the sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming and the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited to God, but to you by miracles, wonders, signs, which God did uh, among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you will be, with the help of wicked men, putting him to death by nailing him on the cross. God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. It's impossible to keep uh, a hold on him. In, in verse 37, a little bit further, then when the people heard this, they were cut to their hearts and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for admission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So he said, repent, stop doing things your way and start doing them God's way. Change your heart, change your mind to God's way of doing things. Praise God. And so that's where repentance is change the mind for the better, to hardly amend with abhorrence your past sins. So when we come to Christ, we do need to repent. See, some preachers are preaching today, you don't have to repent from anything. You don't have to repent from anything. No, you do. You have to repent from your sins. Well, God just loves me the way I am. No, God loves you, but he wants you to repent. He wants to repent. Amen. And get right with him. So in verse 30, the 37, 39, the, the Bible says, The promise is to you and your children, to all who are far off, for who, whom the Lord, will, uh, Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So it doesn't have all the words that Peter said. He preached a long sermon that day. And those who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 were added to their number that day. Wouldn't that be wonderful? We're having a water baptism day. Wouldn't it be wonderful we have water baptized 3,000 people? I'd need a lot of help. I don't know, you know, people get wet and then they get heavy. And then when you're trying to help them get up and, and everything, I've ne don't worry, I've never lost anybody yet. <laughs> Hello. Closest thing to that was, uh, I think, at creation. I was there when uh, I saw about three or three to five hundred people get water baptized. And I was one of the youth pastors there baptizing people. It was really fun. And the water wasn't really clean either. It was kind of muddy. But people didn't care. Those teenagers didn't care. They just got water baptized. They're like, hey, let's go for it. We're going to live for Jesus. And they were really happy. Amen. And they were really happy. Amen. And so he says, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Listen, church, we're living in a corrupt generation. Pretty corrupt. They're really bold about their sin. But praise God, we can be bold about Jesus. And the, and that, the church was born that day. And we see the fellowship of believers. And what happened after that? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayers. The apostles were teaching, and they were starting to write the books of the Bible. Praise God. And fellowship. And everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. And they sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Now, this was the early church, and they were, had all things in common. Some people say, see, look at that. God endorses communism. That's not what it's saying. It's not what it's saying. Because the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of them that do as we seek him. I mean, it's just saying that we love it. We need to love each other. Amen. Say, we need to love each other. And they sold properties and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. And they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying favor of all the people. And the Lord added to, the num uh, to their number daily who should be saved. And that's what we want. And I just have two more scriptures I want to share with you. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18. We, this talks about Jesus, but I want this to be talking about you too. And Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Why don't you say that with me? Why don't we make this a confession? Say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Recovery of the sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And the acceptable year of the Lord was the year of Jubilee. That all debts are forgiven. And that we're all set free. And the last scripture I want to share this morning is Matthew 11 verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John. 
again, those things which you do hear and see. Uh, I remember when I worked for Salvation Army, I was a teen camp counselor. They brought in a, uh, the choir director from Asbury Seminary, and they, they taught us how to sing. And they taught us how to sing this song. And I was there with a bunch of uh, little, little, little boys. And they, we didn't have any girls in our group, and they, so they broke them into different groups. And we only had two basses. Little boy, he was around 10 years old. His name was Jim Thorpe. And he talked like this. So me and Jim, he was about three feet tall. He, they put him on a chair next to me, and we sang the bass part of the song. And I said, go and tell John what you see in here. Go and tell John what you see in here. Go and tell John what you see in here. That the blind recover their sight. And it goes, la, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. And I told Jim, little Jim Thorpe, I said, Jim, you're going to be a really good singer. And he said, you're already a good singer, Chris. They didn't call me Pastor Chris. He's like, you're good. I said, well, thank you, Jim. I was glad you're singing here. Listen, we need to go tell other people. It says that the blind receive their sight, that the lame walk, that the lepers are cleansed, that the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Well, that's what the Lord wanted me to share today. Let's just have every head bow and every eye close. Father God, we just thank you for your word that's gone forth today. Father, we thank you and not return void, but accomplish what you please, and it should prosper where to you send it. With every head bow and every eye closed, perhaps there's a person in this place. And you've never prayed and received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But God is knocking on the door of your heart. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open that door, I'll come in and be with him. The Bible says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And God demonstrates his own love for us, that where we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So how, how you do this is by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised from the dead, then you'd be saved. For with the heart man believes in the righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So is there anybody here today who would like to pray and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Right where you are, with every head bowed, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Is there anybody here today? I see that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You put your hand down. Is there anybody here today and you say, well, I've gone my own way. I've been doing my own thing and I want to come back to Jesus. I want to give my heart back to him. I've been like the prodigal son. I've been going here and there. But I want to give my heart back to Jesus. If that's you, raise your hand. Anybody here today? Anybody here today? And I want to give another call this morning because today is the day of Pentecost. If you're here today and you say, yes, I'm living for Jesus, but I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to be endued with that power from on high. I want to pray for you. I want you to come on down. If you raised your hand on any of these three things, three things if you raised your hand or you should have raised your hand, I want you to stand up right where you are. I want you to come on down. Come on down right now. Just come on down right now. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you want to pray with the evidence of speaking in tongues, if that's you, just come on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid what somebody will think. Just be more concerned about what God thinks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The wind is blowing again. Amen. The wind is blowing again. Just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. Amen. Praise God.